Да. Hi, my name is Alex and today, 23rd of April, is United Nations English Language Day. That is why I am speaking English. Well, not really. Obviously, I am speaking English because I am addressing to a public that understands English. And I may have some trouble speaking because most of the time I don't speak English, I speak Romanian. That is also my nationality. Nationality. The status of belonging to a particular nation, whether by birth or naturalization. Now, I was born Romanian and I probably consider myself Romanian. But what if I wouldn't actually be born in Romania and I'll be part of another country? Though my origin will still be the same, would I still feel Romanian? I am at my home now. In a small village next to Brodina and very close to Crinian border. The border that was settled after World War II, which some believe it was meant to be on Suchava River. So if that happened, I would have been born in Ukraine. If chances make I'll still be born. But unluckier than me are people in northern Bukovina. People with same ethnicity as me living in Ukraine on actual Romanian land. And there are cases that I know of Romanians living in Ukraine wanting to be united with their country, Romania. But this isn't just one case of naturalization for Romanian people into other nations. Moldova is now in the same kind of situation and through history Romanian lands and people were divided and occupied by greater powers. But that did not change the fact that people identified themselves as Romanians and always wanted to be part of their motherland. So what does matter more when you identify your nationality? The fact that you live inside the present borders of a country, your actual ethnic origins, or maybe your personal national feelings. Your nationality, like gender or race, isn't something that you choose or decided, right? If so, why would you be proud of something that just randomly happened? How does this even affect you and produce feelings for you? I bet that most of you can tell when you encounter your national symbols that there is something you can relate to in particular. David Eagleman explains in this short video how colors arranged on a piece of cloth in the pattern of a national flag has a meaning for someone according to that person's history of experience. And the fact that we don't perceive things as they are, we perceive them as we are. In that case, nationality is a set of experiences some people share on a particular level speaking the same language, taking part to national historical events or learning about them from older generations parents, grandparents, teachers so I guess it's hard to tell what my experiences would be if I was born or naturalized outside the Romanian borders probably, I guess, better roads but as a member of society, how important is this national identity? is it just some feeling a group of people share? And what if you feel like belonging to a nation that practically it doesn't exist? This is Mother Nature. Always a good place to be. I feel like I want to spend the rest of my life in nature. But I can't live in the woods like a monkey. Because I'm evolved. I live in society like a person. But there are people that are not even considered a person and they actually have less rights than an animal. People like us, but with no identity, a worldwide problem known as statelessness. There are about 12 million of them. The lack of nationality is also the case of the region Transnistria, a self-proclaimed state that is not recognized by the rest of the world. Currently, Transnistria is part of Moldova, but people are not satisfied with their government and want independence or being part of Russia. They have a currency, border controls, a parliament, a national theme, and citizenship. But they have problems with their economy, their lack of jobs, and the local university degree is not recognized internationally. They want a national identity, which in the eyes of the rest of the world doesn't exist. They are stateless. An interesting article Dickie shared with me goes in more detail with the problem, among with photographs done by German photographer Julia Oates. Is there a solution to this problem? What should the world feel and do about these sort of situations? Should there be limits and rules when it comes to national identity? Is my English going to get better? I'm going to let you think of these questions, not because I don't know the answers, but because. Thank you for your attention. And one more thing, today is also the International Day of the Book. 
And in the end I'm going to let someone else make a book recommendation. Hi guys, greetings from uh, Red Oats. Uh, book day. Uh, Alex asked me to recommend a book. And um, one book which is... Books are good, books are good. Especially if you've got uh, enough concentration span to read something a bit big and juicy. So Sapiens, A Brief History of Mankind by Yuri Noah Harari. Marvellous book. Covers all sorts of aspects uh, from human evolution to psychology to structure of society. It's all sorts of different aspects of uh, what it means to be human. There's lots of other aspects too, but uh, well worth getting hold of and, and reading through. Quite easy to read, very well written in advance of the conference on who am I, what am I, why am I. Um, you don't have to agree with everything, of course. And uh, books, books. Uh, Alex, without realising it, has put me in a very embarrassing position asking me to recommend a book because I can't let this opportunity go without saying, go onto Amazon, Google Dickie Twart, uh, and there you will see the most extraordinary book uh, which describes what it's like to rejoice in perplexity in all sorts of ways. Go for the Kindle edition, uh, which is 99p. Um, with both these books, as you know, with on Amazon you can download, uh, on the Kindle editions you can download quite a substantial um, sample to see if you like them. Bye for now, or in fact, if you're looking at this, Hello?